So the XPG Gamex S11 Pro NVMe drive has a breakthrough performance and stays cool-headed in the face of battle. Okay. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So this M.2 NVMe drive was recently sent to me to look at and boy have I had fun looking at it or what. There's not much to talk about how it looks as it looks quite nice. There are these nice racy curves on its heat spreader which makes it look like a sports car ready to head in the battle as stated earlier. But yeah, to be honest, I truly dig the design. It's far better than the plain looking uh, drives we usually see in the market. XPG typically does invest in their resources for designing their products which is apparent here too. The heat spreader for some reason on my review unit came off easily and I'm pretty sure it's not common but this kind of shows that you shouldn't stick your nose in between the emotional bond uh, between the storage chip and the heat spreader. Let them have their romance. Well jokes apart the form factor of this NVMe drive is M.2 2280 which means it's 20mm wide and 80mm long and if I focus on the main specs of the S11 Pro it's a 64 layers 3D TLC NAND flash drive with PCI Gen 3 interface support. The controller on it is by Silicon Motion and there's a DRAM cache buffer on it too. When I was googling to know more about the silicon uh, motion controller on the drive here, I was thrown these results that about 4 months ago ADATA uh, kind of downgraded to a slower controller on the chip. But in reality, as per the papers and as per the other users, there wasn't much performance difference so a lot of consumers won't be bothered by it by the end. The read speeds remain the same across all the different storage variants. The 512 MB version here has a claimed read speed of 3.5 GB per second and the write speed of 2.3 GB per second. The drive is backed by 5 years of warranty which I love as I love warranties. The TBW of this drive is 320TB which is pretty decent but what does it mean? Well, it means that this drive has a TBW of 320TB. Well, TBW means how many terabytes can be written on its SSD in its lifetime. So for example, to effectively make this 512 GB SSD reach its end of life within the 5 years of warranty period, you need to write at least 175 GB of data per day continuously for 5 years. The 256 GB one in contrast has a TBW of 160 terabytes, which means 87.6 GB per day and the one terabyte can withstand 350 GB uh, per day for 5 years to push it towards the end of its life. So if you crunch a lot of daily data for simulations or other similar stuff, uh, which can easily gulp uh, 100 to 150 GB of data per day, then definitely go for a higher storage option. But if you just need this as a primary OS drive and don't have such extreme requirements, then even the 256 GB variant would be enough too. Now I'm going to post some benchmarks on the screen. In all of these tests, you will notice that the smaller 32 MB or 50 MB file transfer results are faster than the larger 32 GB of file transfer results. That could mean that either the temperature of the drive is throttling the performance or the DRAM cache buffer just cannot sustain higher speeds with heavy files. So after these benchmarks, I was just curious to test the real world performance of the drive. So I copied two different sets of data, one of which contained many large video files and the other folder had many smaller files of all sorts of extensions. These same set of folders were then copied in both the XPG S11 Pro and the Samsung Evo 970 Plus. And both of these NVMe drives were installed on their dedicated Gen 4 M.2 slots on the ASUS Stuff X570 Gaming Plus motherboard. The results ahead are not indicative of anything as both the drives are performing as per their own specifications but it was a real world test nonetheless as I believe in real world copy and shifting data is one of the things many people do. In the first test I started shifting a chunk of smaller files from the S11 Pro to the 970 Plus and the transfer speeds initially stayed over 1.7 GB per second and then started dropping to 1.2 GB per second for the 20 GB of data I tested. And copying approximately 20 GB of data for a few big video files, the speed stayed around 1.7 GB per second until it started to drop to 1 GB per second by the end of the transfer. And then going the other way around, when I copied data from the uh, Evo 970 Plus to the S11 Pro and with the smaller files first, the transfer speed started from 1.7 GB per second but soon dropped to around 450 MB per second. And again with the larger files the transfer started from 2 GB per second and then dropped to 450 MB per second by the end of the transfer. And during all of these different tests uh, with its own heat spreader the average temperature stayed around 58 degrees Celsius with 71 degrees C as the peak temperature. 
But when I tested the drive with the motherboard's uh, supplied heat spreader over the S11 Pro, which to be honest is at least two and a half times the size of the S11 Pro's own heat spreader, the average temperature stayed around 54 degrees Celsius with peak temperature still 63 degrees Celsius. So yeah, a pretty, pretty looking M.2 drive which is quite fast and handles smaller chunks of data way better than heavier files on it. That means it's not quite perfect if you plan to do video editing with many massive 4K video files on the timeline, but it will definitely be wiser if you plan to run this uh, as a primary OS drive or to even install and play games from it. The real-world test earlier showed that the Evo 970 Plus has relatively faster write speeds than the S11 Pro, but the 970 Plus generally costs a little more than the S11 Pro without the sexy heatsink over it. But if you are a utilitarian and uh, looks don't matter to you and if the price difference between these two drives isn't huge in your region as that's one of the factors that varies a lot throughout the globe, then the Evo 970 Plus will be a better option. But if and only if you have a heat spreader for it as the e uh, Evo 970 Plus uh, runs pretty hot without it. So if you like my efforts on the video, then do leave a like and sub with a bell or even better, you can buy me a coffee so that I can put more efforts into such honest content for you here. You can also hop onto a Discord server for more chit chats over similar topics. So stay safe humans. That's all for today. Mewbot out.